Hello, Jenna Dix here. Today, I wanted to dive in and talk about something really exciting. Robert's Rule of Order. For those of you that know what I'm talking about, hopefully you already know, I'm kind of giggling a little bit at that comment because it's not super exciting, but Robert's Rule of Order is something very important. And if you are in the political space, it's important to have at least a basic understanding of Robert's Rule of Order. Robert's Rule of Order, also known as Parliamentary Procedure, is how a lot of our meetings and our conventions are conducted. We follow the Robert's Rule of Order procedure to make sure that our meetings are being held in an efficient and effective way. Things are just, orders of business are just being taken care of as smoothly as they possibly, possibly can, and this procedure helps. When I first walked into my first convention, um, my husband, you know, tagging along with me, we were confused. <laughs> we were very confused. We were unaware of Robert Rule of Order. We really didn't understand it at all. As our conventions, you know, started to add up how many we had attended, we started to understand a little bit more. But now that I've spent some time actually researching Robert's Rule of Order, it's definitely becoming more clear. I'm far from an expert, my friends, far from an expert. But it's helping me have a better understanding of how these meetings flow. And it's cool because I really had never attended any other meetings where Robert's Rule of Order was taken into place until after I did some research, about a month later, I attended a committee meeting for a volunteer thing that I'm part of, and they conduct their business in the same manner. So I walked in and I was like, oh, cool, I kind of know what's going on. And it truly does help meetings flow a little bit better, which is what a lot of us want and a lot of us need because we have busy lives. And if we can make a meeting flow faster and more effectively and more efficiently, why not? So Robert's Rule of Order, Andy Aplikowski actually talked about in a recent MNGOP training that there is a Robert's Rule of Order book. They're on the 12th edition. I will put the link down below for the Amazon version, um, but there's a paperback and you can also download it into your Kindle, which is cool because as Andy said, and totally true, you can type in something that you're wanting to look up and it'll bring you right to that page time saver so you're not flipping through a book and it's always on your phone so you can just grab it you always got it with you right um but i just wanted to touch on a couple of the main points of robert's rule of order that will hopefully help you have a little bit better of an understanding until you spend some time researching you can definitely get the book like i said i love videos so i um, just youtubed for a few hours one day like total nerd style, but I have a better understanding now. So when it comes to Robert's Rule of Order, every meeting is conducted via a agenda. Everyone sits in on the committee. They vote on the agenda to kick off the meeting to make sure that that's in agreement that we will follow this plan. Every topic that's going to be discussed, there must be a motion to ensure that, yes, let's bring this issue or this topic to the table. So what that would look like is somebody says, you know, I motion X, Y, Z. Somebody then has to second that or agree. Yes, I, yep, I support that same focus. So I motion, I second that other individual, and then that issue is then brought to the table, and that is the order, that's the business piece that's being focused on. After it's been motioned, typically depending, there are a couple things like, I motion for adjournment wouldn't be something that's going to be debated unless it's you know thrown in the middle of a meeting but um, a debate would then happen there's rules to the debates typically sometimes you know everyone's given 30 seconds sometimes everybody's given you know a minute they go back and forth a little bit there's rules it's all typically on the forefront of what those rules are going to be um, also at that same time amendments can be brought to the table. So I amend that XYZ for that motion. I take away, I add to that initial motion, okay? Fancy, fancy now, we can amend the amendment. You a lot of times see this in you know House of Representatives, Senate floor conversations, things of that sort. But the main things you need to know is there has to be a motion. There can be debate other than, you know, adjournment at the end. And um, at the, 
then there's going to be a vote. People vote on the motion, if it passes or if it fails. You can table a motion, meaning let's not talk about this anymore, the debate's not going anywhere, or this is just, it, this doesn't need to be happening right now. You can table it or you can postpone the motion. Um, but I highly encourage, if you are going to be partaking in political types of events, do some research on Robert's Rule. Grab that 12th edition, watch some YouTubes. This, like I said, is very high level pieces of information right here. But hopefully when you walk into that first event, you're not like, what the heck is going on? Business is being conducted via Robert's Rules. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, a better resource, like I said, check that book. Check some other Robert's Rule of Order YouTubes as well. Thank you so much.